Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, to speak at, uh, at this occasion. And um, uh, especially I want to thank uh, the, uh, the speakers in the first round uh, and the specialists that we have uh, on human rights, uh, we have heard in the first round, because I think that they have given a, a useful uh, and, and also a valuable uh, insight uh, in this massacre of, of 1988. Especially, I think, uh, Mr. Robertson and uh, Professor D uh, David uh, have uh, illustrated that this is not only a crime uh, against uh, humanity, but that all the conditions are there uh, to qualify uh, the massacre of 1988 as, uh, uh, as genocide. Uh, and uh, I think that could be a very uh, important conclusion uh, of this conference. The, uh, the, the fact that uh, every uh, of these distinguished uh, professors, specialists on human rights are clear and saying this is genocide. Uh, and that gives uh, me uh, the possibility also to say that I'm, I'm, I'm most, uh, 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 I want to send my deepest appreciation to the testimonies that we have heard. Uh, today uh, from survivors, from uh, the, the families uh, of uh, those who have been uh, murdered. Um, uh, because uh, it's, uh, we, we are still, I'm still shocked by uh, what happened in 1988 uh, in the Islamic Republic of, uh, of Iran. And, and the reason why uh, is because these people, who we are talking about, uh, mainly young people uh, had no chance to hide themselves, had no chance to flee from their tortures. All these people were already locked up. All these people were already deprived from their freedom. All these people were already jailed uh, and uh, convicted uh, by so-called uh, revolutionary courts. Uh, and it's because of this fatwa of, of, of Khamenei that, is, that these people already jailed, uh, were tortured, interrogated in inquisitional sessions uh, by the so-called death commissions and almost hanged uh, immediately. So the, 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 what is so special to the massacre of 1988, I think, is that it was targeting a whole generation of young people and young women. And I think, uh, and I think there is proof for that, that this was already planned years in advance, what happened in 1988. And what happened in 1988 is the, is the consequence of the Iranian regime uh, itself. The fact that this regime uh, in always it tries to silence one or the other way, in the most brutal way, those who are asking for improvement of human rights, those who are asking for freedom, uh, or even those who are asking for the sustainable solution for the for for, for water. Eh? Also, that is seen by the uh, by the regime as an attack on 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 on, on the regime. So I think that the 1988 uh, uh, massacre was planned. It was rigorously prepared. It was gruesome executed. And yeah, at breakneck speed with a clear target group in mind. Uh, and therefore, I think that Mr. Robinson and Professor David are right uh, to uh, qualify it uh, as genocide. I want also to, to pay tribute to the uh, to the, the victims by a short moment to uh, to imagine together here in the conference uh, the situation that these murders had never taken place. Imagine that instead of this mass slaughter, uh, all these people, many of them were, were, were teenagers, many of them were in their early 20s, had regained their freedom. That is people were not slaughtered, but that these people 
uh, talented and driven men and women would have, yeah, seized the opportunity to rebuild their country, raise their children, start their own business, cast their ballots in free and fair elections. Yeah, then I think that without that massacre of 1988, there will be a, co a totally different uh, Iran today. Uh, and so th this, this, this massacre of 1988 uh, has, a, has a, a very deep uh, signification, I think, uh, for, for Iran. And it has been said already, but I want to uh, recall it. Uh, the anniversary of the 1988 massacre is not only to mourn those who were slaughtered, it, it's simply also uh, to remind uh, what price uh, has been paid for freedom and for the fight for freedom. And we have to recognize, that has already been said, but I want to recall it, that uh, three decades uh, after the massacre, the international community has, yeah, let, let be, let's say it again, uh, failed to act uh, over this crime against uh, humanity. Um, well, we all know it has been said, but I, re I, I repeat it, the events of the summer of 1988 were never officially investigated uh, by the UN. And, and as we know, uh, the instigators and the perpetrators were, were never uh, indicted. And, and far worse, uh, we have to say, the perpetrators to, to continue uh, to enjoy impunity uh, and, and today, yeah, the regime is run by the killers of that time, eh? occupying, we all know them, we know the names, senior government positions, including the new uh, president, uh, Raisi, uh, of uh, who we all know, uh, his uh, track record on, on, on human rights violations, and who played, as we know, a leading role in these uh, massacres. I think that the only sole benefit of, uh, I cannot say election, because it was not a fair election, but the promotion, I will say, uh, of Raisi to uh, the presidency, is that maybe for the first time, uh, it has drawn the world's attention uh, to that massacre again of 1988 and to the many uh, long-established uh, patterns of human rights violations and murders uh, in, uh, in, in Iran. And I think that it would be good also uh, that uh, we uh, are grateful to express our uh, gratefulness to all uh, the journalists, activists and social media, human rights defenders, uh, that in the, the last months since the, uh, the promotion uh, of, uh, of Raisi have reminded the world on uh, this man's litany of abuses uh, and crimes that, uh, yeah, that run like a threat to his entire uh, dubious uh, career. Uh, we should also, and I want uh, to go a little bit in detail in this, be grateful for the case of Hamid Nouri, who is standing trial in Stockholm uh, for war crimes and murder uh, in connection with the uh, Hohardas prison uh, massacre, because as we know, it's for the first time that a member of the so-called Death Commission is facing prosecution, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, this trial uh, will not only reveal uh, the details and names of what happened, but also be an example uh, for other countries uh, to uh, put uh, people before court, because let's not forget that in many countries uh, in the West and in many European countries, in the existing law, in the existing legislation, there is already the possibility to put uh, people that are suspected to be perpetrator of crimes against humanity before their courts, before their own courts, as it is the case now uh, in, uh, in, in Sweden, so what Sweden is doing, what the courts in Sweden is doing, is an extremely important example that, that needs to be followed up by the same attitude in many other Western and European countries. Because in there, I repeat myself, in their legislation uh, today, there is already the possibility to put perpetrators of crimes against humanity before their courts 
even when the facts have not been uh, uh, done on the soil uh, of uh, these uh, European or Western uh, states. But nevertheless, I agree with uh, the, the general uh, appeal today in this conference, uh, that is that um, we need a profound official uh, international investigation uh, because we cannot tolerate the fact that uh, impunity uh, uh, continues and we, we must not delay it any longer. It's high time, 33 years after the tragic events, to fully uncover uh, the scope of the massacre and it's our, our, our moral duty uh, to do so. Because if we fail to do so, uh, we remain not only blind to the uh, terrible atrocities uh, committed by uh, these regimes, but I think and that's even more important, we remain blind uh, to the endless grief of the affected families and the survivors. For them, this continues, this tragedy. And this tragedy can only end when those who are responsible uh, uh, are sanctioned, uh, are uh, convicted. And not uh, launching an official inquiry on an international level implies also that we open the door of impunity to every other regime where torture and murder are common practice. And failing to carry out an official investigation under the auspices of uh, the UN would result, in fact, in inviting all malice regimes where human rights are trampled to continue their practices, to continue uh, their violence against their own uh, uh, people. So we need uh, urgently this official inquiry and uh, for what was possible after the genocide in Rwanda and after the civil war in former uh, Yugoslavian Republic must also be possible uh, for the massacre in Iran. It was possible in Rwanda, it was possible for uh, the former Yugoslavian uh, Republic, an official inquiry under UN followed by the installation of an international criminal uh, tribunal. Uh, I think that Europe has a special role to play uh, in this. Uh, and we always talk about uh, uh, human uh, rights. Uh, we have uh, to live uh, uh, on, uh, to our uh, promises. And we have, as Europe, to be a catalyst uh, for speeding up uh, the process for an official uh, inquiry uh, in, in this. And therefore, uh, I will take an initiative, and that I, I want to announce here in this conference, that is to send a, a message letter officially uh, to Joseph Borrell, uh, the high representative uh, of the Union, uh, for foreign affairs and security policy, requesting him to submit, in the name of Europe, an official request to the UN for the establishment of a commission of inquiry into the massacre and to seek support for that request from other democratic governments uh, like the US, Canada, Australia, Japan, uh, to take up uh, uh, this course. I think that is what we need to do on the European level not only words, but an official request uh, by the European Union to the UN for the establishment of that. So I, I conclude, uh, three decades after the, the 88 prison massacre in Iran, um, it's absolutely needed to, to do that, and we need to do that for the sake of Iran, for the sake of democracy and freedom in Iran, but especially for their families. Uh, so that uh, they finally know where their relatives are buried, that the victims receive their rightful place, and that impunity for crimes against humanity will finally brought uh, to an end. And that will be the best way after 30 years uh, to, for them to conclude uh, their uh, long period uh, of, uh, of mourning. Thank you, Mrs. President. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for your important words, and thank you for your efforts. Uh, as you uh, indicated, 
European governments have an important role and need to pay more attention to human rights in adopting their policy on Iran. It is very important that they hold Raisi and other perpetrators of the 1988 massacre to account.